welcome back to another episode of Dirt Green Steel. You asked for it, so we made it happen. Tyler and I, this is my good friend Tyler, works here at Walpole Green and Herb, my uh, uncle and cousin's farm. Uh, Tyler got permission that we can do a video on the mint distillery. So Tyler's here, he's going to walk us through, show us how everything works, we'll talk about it a little bit. I know uh, how farms work, done a video on a mint still before, but growing up with mint, I decided that I wanted to do my video too, kind of show you a little more in depth how it works. He's done a great job on his video, but I grew up with it. In fact, my dad built this mint still, and in 2006, I helped him rebuild it. So him and I have got our hands in it. So now, Tyler and I are gonna walk you through and uh, we'll explain some stuff on the way through, maybe go through some specs on the boilers. They're what? One's 750 horse, the other one's 650 horse. Yep. And goal combined BTUs and when they're running, it's 43 million BTUs between the two boilers. 43 million BTUs. That's about what Thomas the Tank Engine was. So it kind of puts it in perspective. Little blue train engine, that's about what he put out going down the tracks, right? Yeah, just about. We think. Yeah. <laughs> That's all made up anyways. That sounds good anyways for the video. So uh, first thing we're gonna go through are the two main elements, the fuel and the water that is needed to uh, make mint oil. So let's go get started in the still. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with is the fuel for this mint distillery. It comes from natural gas, it comes from Nipsco, I suppose, wherever they get the natural gas. But anyways, it is brought into the building through this uh, system of gas regulators and stuff. And then it's put through a four inch pipe and it goes back to the boilers. So now we'll head back to the boilers and we'll have a look at them. Okay, so now we're back in the boiler area. It's like being in the belly of Titanic in here. It's pretty hot and steamy. So uh, this is our first boiler here. This Is this a 650 horse? Yeah. Yeah, this is a 650 horse. This boiler came out of the old Porter County Hospital in South Fraser, Indiana. And uh, put it in, and it's been running good ever since. So let's see if we can see the fire. I don't know if my camera will get it. Oh, yeah. So there's the fire in it. It is a raging inferno. It is hot in there. You would not want to be in there. Let's go look at boiler number two. This is a Johnston boiler. It is definitely warm around it. They are massive boilers. I actually helped move this one in. It's hot in there, really hot in there. Okay, so let's uh, continue our tour. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the water system. This is fresh, well water, really clean water. It's just dark because there's iron in the tank it makes it look dark, but you can drink this. So it comes in, what, three wells? Four. Four wells, pumped in from four wells, and then the water goes from this cold water tank, gets pumped up into the condenser tanks to cool the condensers off. And then when this water is heated in here, it comes back and it goes in this tank. And then it is pumped into the boiler by these two feed pumps. They feed each boiler. So by heating water first, we gain efficiency. So uh, instead of putting cold water in the boilers, it's already up to, well, it's warm bath water, basically. Uh, it's a little hotter than that. Hotter than that. You don't want to put your hands in there, I suppose. It's probably hot tub water. You know. So anyways, let's continue on. So now we're going to talk about the actual steam and what the steam does. So. We have 100 pounds of steam pressure up here on the gauge, and that's what the two boilers are putting out, is 100 pounds right now. So that steam is gonna go through 
the main header up here and it's going to come down on each post and it's going to hook to the mint tub itself. So what this steam is doing is it's going through the wagon. There are a series of pipes through the bottom of the wagon. As that steam goes up through, it collects the oil out of the mint leaves, goes out the condenser line through the ceiling. The condenser line comes down and it goes into the condenser. The condenser is a series of aluminum pipe that are running through the cold water and as that is the steam runs through those aluminum pipes it condenses back into a watery mint oil mix so the watery mint oil mix comes down oh this one's not running right now sorry let's look at this one so that that watery mint oil mix comes down out of the condenser and goes into the separator here so what happens here is the mint oil floats up out of the water and collects up here in the top. Right now, what you see there is pure mint oil. So all that, we just talked about this before, all that water that runs out of these condenser tanks is what's fed back into the boiler to give our efficiency. And we're not wasting any water. Okay, so now Tyler's going to tell us how the Rita still works because the Rita still actually, well, you take on from here. So the Rita still, we don't catch 100% of the oil with the Rita still. Uh, we're only catching 98%, 99% with these. And then all the excess water comes up, water oil mix comes up from the bottom and out this line into that that manifold right there where all these separators are connected to and dumps in to that tank right there which we have a pump for that tank which feeds our two Rita stills we have and if we come back here to the Rita still so the Rita stills are kind of set up like uh, the tub and the condenser just a little different. All your water oil mix is kept down in this bottom part, which is fed through this pump, which comes up here into the spray bar. And in the spray bar, it's got little orifices which cause it to mist. And uh, right here is a steam bar, which put steam into and helps it fan out. So when that mist goes up with the oil particles, that steam helps bring it up to the top, goes out that top condenser line into this condenser tank, which has a little worm inside of it where that steam water travels through. And there's a water jacket on the outside which helps keep it cold to help condensate down. And then once it condenses down to your final form, you get your water oil mixture to come out here and it just floats, all the oil floats to the top. Now we don't, don't have to deal with these quite as often as we do the front ones because like I said, they're only catching 1% or 0.5% of the oil that we lost before. So basically the Rita still is a very, very efficient small mint still yeah. it's all of this just a really really efficient one yeah. so almost like a moonshine still basically yeah. kind of you know it catches it catches really really fine particles of oil basically okay so we'll continue on okay so there's one final step to the whole deal and Tyler's gonna explain it so water that comes from our condenser tanks obviously the boiler boilers ain't calling for water all the time so there's got to be a place for all that excess water to go for this tank so in this tank we have a pipe that comes up from the bottom and you can see where all the water drains into oh yeah i can see it right there yes the water exits through that pipe the excess water Cooling pot and all that water 
excess water there, it just kind of sits there and cools down and leaches away into the surface with all that water. It don't go anywhere but to the ground. So it's clean water. There's There might be just a hint of mineral oil smell to it, but other than that, it's perfectly clean. Once it cools off, you could probably drink it if you wanted to, if you like mint flavored water. But uh, we don't drink it, never have drank it, never will. I don't like mint in my water. So anyways, we'll uh, go get just some, some more video around the still and uh, we'll probably complete the video then. So from my uh, video of mint harvest, I know there was a lot of questions about how long does it take to cook a wagon, uh, what the steam pressure is. So Tyler's gonna go ahead and tell you right now uh, the, the time span and the pressure it takes. So with little tubs right here, we typically only cook those at about 20 PSI. And usually they take about two hours to cook out. We, uh, we'll, we'll check them and it, we'll take a little sample coming out of the condenser. And if there's just like a dime size left on the top of our sample, we know the tub's done. And then but our, the big black tub we have, we'll cook those at about 25, 30 PSI. And usually about, about two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, about how long those things will cook out. And with those ones, we're getting three times the amount of oil we do out of the little tub. So say if we get 50 pounds, 50 pounds, out of uh, one little tub, we'll get 150, 160 pounds out of a big tub. Just, just by the quantity it consumes more compared to a little tub. So we can uh, we can cook up to eight small tubs at a time. Eight of them, right? Ten. Or ten tubs, sorry, ten tubs. I can't count tonight. But uh, ten tubs of the small ones and you can cook uh, what? How many of the black ones at a time? So we have five total black tubs, but we can only cook three in the still with our water situation. And they, they call for a lot more cold water than the yellow ones do. So usually we try to get three in the first round, so that way it just makes for a better use of your day. And would you say the black tubs have really picked up production, or are they, they... Oh, tremendously, yeah. Tremendously. The black tub chopper, it can run a little bit faster than the yellow tub chopper, and just the capacity alone helps speed up and production. And plus the logistics of it, you can get it here, there, and fat, or back and forth faster because you're pulling them at highway speeds. Yep. Where... 55 mile an hour compared to 20, 28 mile an hour. Yeah. So uh, definitely that has picked up production using the black wagons. So go get a little more video. Okay, so now Tyler's going to demonstrate how a separator is drained. So usually what we do, we'll just have a barrel on the scale right here. And we'll just lay this pipe down in. And we close this valve, which shuts off everything to run to the redistill tank. So all this water is going to help rise up all the oil on top. And then we just wait until it gets up to that water line down at the bottom, which you can hopefully see. And then that's when we shut it off and start the process over again. So how many pounds of mineral oil is in there right now? Right now? 40 to 50, 45 to 50. And it looks to be about the line is right down here somewhere maybe, it's hard to tell. Yeah, as you can tell, it just now reached right there. Yeah, so this whole square right now up to this pipe is full of pure mint oil. And oh boy, can you smell it. It's really opening up the sinuses. You get used to it after a while. Yeah, I yeah. Can, I can hardly smell it. Yeah. The other day when I come, is the first time I've been back in this building since like 2008, or no, 2007. And, oh, it brought back the memories as soon as I walked back in here and got a good whiff of it. I sure do miss, I do miss mint season. That was one of my favorite seasons of the year. So, it is a fun time. 
So this just proves that there's more than corn in Indiana. Yeah. There's also essential oils for you essential oil nuts. But this bin oil goes for everything from essential oils to toothpaste to candy. Basically anything that's mint flavored, this oil goes for. It. Yep, you go along with Colgate and Wrigley. So your, your toothpaste, your gum, anything could have a little hint of our mint oil in it. And mint oil is also used for a lot of other things besides food too. There are different chemicals that are extracted out of it. I'm not sure what they are, I just know that there is a process that that does uh, happen in. Alright, now you can see that water line getting up there to that hole. We don't want to get any water in the barrel as little as possible. So that way this barrel is pure peppermint oil. So you do, uh, there's peppermint, spearmint, and native spearmint. And native spearmint. So that's just about green. This one's probably going to be next. So now Tyler's moved on to the uh, other separator that he needed drain. So uh, a few questions, there was a couple questions that were asked in the video of mint harvest. And uh, one of those questions was, uh, how is the mint planted? Well, mint is kind of like a strawberry. You dig it out of the ground, you dig the root out of the ground, you cut it up a little bit, and you replant it. So what is it? You take an acre of roots and they'll replant, what was it, 10 acres? I think an acre goes, goes about 8 to 10 acres. 8 to 10 acres, you get it out of an acre of dug mint roots. So basically what you do is you dig them with a root digger, they go into the mint planter, when they move through the mint planter they get diced up and they get dropped in I believe they're 32 inch rows. They're wide rows. Yeah, 30, 32 inch rows. They get dropped into the rows, and then they get covered up and they grow. So the first year is considered row mint. The second year is considered meadow. meadow mint. And then for the next three years, it's considered meadow mint. And usually, a mint crop only lasts about four years, and then you take it out due to diseases that could start in it. And, and I think rust is a big one that gets in it. So basically you get four good years out of it. Um, another question was how many cuttings can you get per season? Well it all depends on the weather. If you've got a good wet growing season and everything is perfect you can get up to two cuttings out of it. If you have a year that's dry you're going to get one cutting. So I'll just kind of answer those questions a little bit. So now that both of them separators are drained into the barrel, the uh, wagons will be shut off, the steam pressure will be shut off, and uh, they will be disconnected from the distillery, and they'll be pulled out into the driveway, and uh, they'll be uh, picked up by one of the pickups, taken back to the field that they came out of, and they will be dumped. And then, uh, from there, they'll be refilled and the cycle continues. They'll come back and they'll, they'll be distilled again. Uh, I know the one year when I was here, we ran like 2,500 wagons through this building. That was, that, was, that was a lot of wagons to handle. So if anybody ever asks me if I can back a wagon up, I just laugh at them because I've handled a lot of wagons in my day hooking and unhooking because when they go to the field they got to be taken apart dumped and hooked back together in pairs of two i used to like to play around and and uh hook them up maybe pairs of eight or something like that just make crazy long wagon trains out of them that was always fun so uh but anyways uh if you enjoyed this episode of dirt rain steel i know a lot of you will enjoy it because you asked for it uh, if you enjoyed it, give me a like if you haven't already. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Because Tyler and I just talked about doing a uh, mint... Uh, ah, can't talk. We're going to do a mint planting video, which will come this spring. So now uh, Tyler's going to go ahead and shut the steam off for these. He probably won't disconnect them right away. Because there's no other wagons waiting to come in the still. This is the last wagons for the day. So you're going to have a short day today, aren't you?
Yeah, it won't be too long. I should be out of here by about 8 o'clock. The other night you were here to like what? Midnight? 1 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, about midnight. Yeah. So Tyler loves his job. He, uh, he lives for this stuff. So, uh, but anyways, if you enjoyed this episode, give me a like. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Tyler, for the walkthrough. It was awesome. I know that, uh, I know that Ivory, his daughter, is going to love to see him on the YouTube channel. Because him and Ivory and Cora are, like, my biggest fans. I'm the reason you guys are all watching him. So he we're is. That. This is the man, the myth, the legend that got me into the YouTube. He begged me to start a YouTube channel, and I took his word, and I did. So, and it's been an awesome experience, and I thank you for that, Tyler. Thank you very much for talking me into this. It's well, been great. So, anyways, we will see you all in the next one.